I don't know whether it's really fun. It was a bit unfortunate. Some, many years ago, when I was running the business uh, with myself and my wife, and we got some girls helping us as well, and I was doing all the viewings, and it was in central London when the market was really red hot. Um, and um, one evening, we were supposed to be checking a young lady in from overseas who um, looked okay, but she hadn't got a passport and she hadn't got her references and this, that and the other, but she wanted to move in like midday tomorrow. So we arranged to meet her the following Monday. She'd got to go to Birmingham, I think, to get all her stuff. One thing she kept saying continually was that her father was a general in the army in this country that I won't name. Anyway, she turned up at 7.30, I think, um, and we got the keys and everything ready for her so she could check in, providing she came up with all this reference and she had got nothing. She hadn't got a passport. All she'd got was what she originally bought along, which was a bank statement that showed she'd got 95 quid in a savings account, which had made about five quid interest. And she got really quite upset because she wouldn't let have her. And in the end, I said rather sharply, all you've done is prove you've got an income of five pounds. We don't know anything else about you and I can't let you in. And that concluded the interview because I'd got to show a flat to someone else in the same block. So I went straight up to that flat. The young lady had arrived and I showed her in and as she went in, she said, I don't like the door handle. And then we went in the kitchen. She announced she didn't like the tap. The fridge was too small. I said, well, never mind. You know where the door is. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, clearly you don't like the flat. So there's no point in continuing. She said, and I have to forgive me. She said, well, I quite like the flat. I'm sorry. I said, well, I'm sorry, but I don't like you. And she left not the proudest moments in my life. The next day, that woman <laughs> rang up and one of the women answered the phone and she said, I want to complain about that dreadful man. He, uh, uh, as I left, sitting on the doorstep was a, a girl in tears <laughs> who had upset earlier. She said, and I said, I'm gonna ring up and complain to the manager and my God, I'd never want to be married to him. And the woman said, well, actually he is the manager and I am married to him. <laughs> In terms of tenant experience as a landlord, I've had countless experiences of tenants who were unfeasibly pleasant and would ask me where on the internet they could post a comment about their lovely landlord, myself. But mostly, sad to say, it has been with tenants who have not paid rent, tenants who have never cleaned the property, and one in particular comes to mind, a tenant in an HMO in Chiswick, who, even though in the tenancy agreement it stated no pets, slipped in two cats, and the other tenants, the other four tenants in the property, phoned me up the same day saying, we're covered in bites, what's going on? I went round to the flat, and I find not only are the two cats there, but it's attracted other cats who've come into the house, and the house was absolutely infested with fleas. And I had to strip the house, wash every single garment, every single item of clothing for the tenants, and had to go to court to have her leave the flat, because she, the house, because she blamed me, effectively, for allowing her to have the cats in the house. Regarding my experiences with tenants, I have a house of multiple occupation in Reading in Berkshire, and early on in ownership, I had a telephone call at 5.30 on a Friday evening when I was out enjoying myself from another tenant in the property to say that she had another tenant's girlfriend locked in her room as he was high on drugs and he had attacked her with a samurai sword chasing around the house effectively to kill her. And the tenant phoned me to say, what do I do please Clive Landlord? I said, call the law. The law arrived within three minutes literally three minutes, arrested him, took him to Reading Police Station, stuck him in a cell overnight, came to the house, confiscated all his knives that he had, other weaponry, and I then evicted him. I know that in one of my properties, they, um, when they know I'm coming to do an inspection or, or a visit, they do get up quite early and um, do their gardening and it, it's um, silly o'clock and um, they, they try to make a good impression for me and they seem to go um, yeah, to great lengths to, to do the gardening and things like that, which I, I think is great. But yeah, it's all about um, the neighbours uh, keeping me informed. So it's, um, it's great.